Hans quickly hid behind one of the larger chests in the corner of the room that had been sitting close to the desk. He pulled his arms and legs close to his chest to make himself into as small of a target as possible in hopes of not being seen. Ah, this is it, he thought to himself as he heard the sound of guards unlocking the door. Hans closed his eyes as tight as he could and took in a deep breath as he heard the creaking sound of the wooden door swinging inward and opening up the room to the guards. Hans didn't dare open his eyes or poke his head out for fear he would be seen, but he listened closely for any sign that he had been discovered. I probably wouldn't make it far, but I'd be a fool if I didn't try to run if I needed to, he thought to himself. Hans' eyes shot open as he heard the guards begin to talk. See, I told you there was no one in here, one of the guards said to the other. Another guard let out a loud sigh. Ah, I could have sworn I heard something. Don't come this way, please don't come this way, Hans thought to himself as he heard what sounded like the guards moving further into the room. Look, said one of the guards, I hear things in this castle all the time, whether it be the rats or my head. It's an old place, sometimes it likes to trick you. It was probably nothing. Let's not waste any more time. Yeah, I swear I heard something moving around in here, replied a guard. But I suppose you're right. Let's look elsewhere. Elsewhere, Hans thought to himself. But before he could spend any more time concerning himself with what the guards had said, he heard the sound of the large wooden door slamming shut and then locking once more. He waited a moment before poking his head out from behind the chest in order to make sure that the guards had truly left. And once he felt it was safe, Hans slowly rose from his hiding place. I shouldn't waste any more time, Hans thought as he looked around one last time before making his way over to the hatch that would lead him back into the secret passageways. He placed a hand over the breast of his jacket and smirked as he felt the small piece of parchment that he had found hidden within the drawers of the desk. Without any more hesitation, Hans quietly lifted up the trapdoor and began making his way down the ladder. As he made his descent back into the darkness of the tunnels, Hans couldn't help but wonder what would happen to him after he made it back to the Duke. Is the weasel going to be true to his word and set us free, or are Lars and I truly in over our heads? Hans shook his head at the thought of his older brother and what he would think of him for working with the Duke alone. Hans began to slowly make his way back through the tunnels, and he couldn't help but notice that the castle seemed to be much noisier than it had been on its way in. There seemed to be a lot of movement on the other side of the walls. He couldn't make out much chatter at that moment, but from what he could make out, it sounded like those in the castle were all on edge. For a moment, Hans wondered if he had been discovered, especially since it seemed as if the guards who almost discovered him in the attic were looking for something or someone. He did his best to push that thought out of his head. No, if they knew that I was here, they would have searched around harder. Surely I wouldn't have been in custody, Hans thought to himself. But what could it possibly be? As Hans continued to make his way through the dark passage, he couldn't help but think back on what he had found hidden in that drawer. As he felt his breast pocket to ensure that the small piece of paper was still there, Hans wondered, What are these spirits that the queen mentioned, and why didn't Elsa ever get this letter? That's when Hans remembered about the duke. He's going to be upset that I broke the seal, but what do I care? I did my job. Hans began to pick up his pace a bit while remaining as quiet as he could. The noises coming from the castle around him eventually all began to fade and blend into one another, and soon Hans was able to push it all into the back of his mind. Meanwhile, he couldn't keep his train of thought away from the letter that he had discovered and was in the process of smuggling out of the castle. I knew that King Renard was ruthless, but to think that he would go to such great lengths to weaken the people of Northaldra. He couldn't help but feel as though Renard reminded him of someone. Father surely would enjoy hearing this. I feel he and Renard would have had much in common. After walking for a few more minutes, Hans decided to make a quick stop and double check that map that Arthur had given him in order to be sure that he was going the right way. He pulled out the map and did his best to see it in the dark chamber he had stopped in. There was a bit of light coming in through the cracks in the wall toward the ceiling, so Hans did his best to position the map into the light. He was surprised to see that he was only about halfway through the tunnel system. Just around that corner and I'll be outside of the throne room. I should be extra quiet, he thought to himself as he began folding up the map and continued down the pathway. 
Hans made sure to make each step as quiet as possible while keeping his ear close to the wall just in case he heard any commotion. Hans was stopped in his tracks as he was making his way past what he presumed was the throne room. He could hear the sound of a loud commotion coming from the other side of the wall, and thanks to the fact that the walls had been built thinner in that area, Hans could actually make out some of what the people in the throne room were talking about. From what Hans could tell, it sounded like more guards and they all seemed to be a bit on edge. Remember men, we have an intruder in the castle and the queen has requested that we bring them to her. Intruder, Hans thought to himself, concerned that he had somehow been discovered. How could they possibly know? I need you to relay a message to Queen Elsa, the head guard began telling one of his subordinates. Tell her that I have placed guards on all of the exits and we have men searching all of the chambers as we speak. If there is someone here, assure her that we will find them. Hans' heart began to race. Everything in him told him to start running to the exit, but he knew that the sound of his footsteps running through the passage might echo, which would only lead the guards right to him. Maybe they don't know about the tunnel. Hans thought to himself in an attempt to calm himself down. He began taking deep breaths as he continued to make his way through the secret passage. He knew that it was most likely just in his head, but he could swear that the noise that poured into the passageway from the interior of the castle began to grow louder and louder. Hans tried his best to ignore what he was hearing, but after finding out that the guards were on the lookout for an intruder, he couldn't help but feel anxious. Without realizing it, Hans' feet began moving faster and faster, and before long Hans was lightly jogging through the dark corridors. Every noise he heard caused him to shudder. What am I going to do? He asked himself as he began to fear that he was going to be captured. He continued to lightly run his way back through the secret passage when all of a sudden he smelled something that caused him to slow his tracks a bit. It was a smell that he recognized from his time passing through the passage on his way into the castle. Suddenly, Hans felt himself calming down a bit. He realized where he was and it was almost as if that was comforting him. Kitchen, Hans thought to himself. It's not far now. Hans began to pass by the section of the tunnel that ran alongside the kitchen, and it was almost exactly as it had been before. Everyone in the kitchen seemed to be enjoying themselves for the most part, and Hans could hear the unmistakable sound of people laughing from the other side of the wall. The laughter quickly faded, however, and Hans was once again stopped in his tracks at the sound of what he could only presume were members of the guard. Arthur! Where's Arthur? One of the guards was asking. Over here! came a reply from deeper in the kitchen. Oh no, Hans thought. He pressed his ear to the wall in an attempt to hear what they were saying a bit better. It was difficult for him to hear everything over the noise of the people continuing to cook and move around the kitchen. Where is he? asked the guard, but Hans didn't hear a reply. I know you hear me, boy. The queen knows that you helped sneak him into the castle. Now, where is he? Sir, I... Arthur began saying before being cut off. Now, before you say anything, I need to tell you that she doesn't blame you for it. In fact, she doesn't even want me to punish you. All she wants is the intruder. Please don't say it, please, Hans hoped to himself. Hans' hopes were crushed, however, once he heard Arthur's response. I showed him to the storeroom. The storeroom? How did he get past us? The guard loudly questioned. The, the tunnels. I led him through the tunnels. Hans couldn't stand there anymore. He knew that he had to make his way out of the passage as fast as he could because now they were certainly coming for him. He no longer cared about keeping quiet. His only goal was to make it out of the castle before the guards caught up to him, and he had no way of knowing when that would happen. Hans knew that he was relatively close to the exit, but he had no clue whether or not there would be other entrances that the guards could come in and cut him off. With each step that Hans took, he was concerned that he would be cornered with nowhere to go. But at that point, all he could manage to do was press onward and hope that he made it out in time. How could they possibly have known about me? Hans wondered to himself. I don't understand who could have given me up. The Duke wouldn't risk his own safety by giving me up to Elsa. But as he said, he could use me. Hans' train of thought was cut off and he knew he needed to pick up the pace. Out of nowhere, coming from behind him, Hans could hear the sound of footsteps running through the hall. The guards had made their way into the passage with him. The footsteps thundered through the narrow passage and sounded like a rush of thunder that was coming right for Hans. His breathing grew quicker as he pushed himself harder and harder to speed up, but Hans could only run so fast. The sound of the footsteps seemed to grow a bit closer, but Hans recognized the section of that passage that he was in. 
I'm right there, he thought to himself. I made it. Hans knew that if he could make it around the next bend, he would be able to see the entrance to the tunnel that he stepped in to get into the castle. He leaned forward and continued to sprint as fast as he could, and a smile began to form on his face as he believed he'd finally made it out. Once I'm in the woods, he thought, I can lose them. Hans continued through the passageway, and as he rounded the bend, he could see signs of light bleeding in from the entrance. But once his way out of the castle was finally in sight, his smile quickly faded. About 20 yards in front of Hans and between him and his way out, Hans could see a small group of guards standing in wait. No, Hans thought. He slid to a stop before attempting to turn and run back into the tunnels. But the plan quickly faded out of his mind as he saw another group of guards rounding the corner behind him. There was no place for Hans to go. He'd been trapped. He looked around and over his shoulder at the two groups of guards as they grew closer and closer to him. As the guards made their way to Hans, two of them grabbed him and brought him down to his knees. He looked up to see one of the guards smiling. We got you, the guard said with a smirk on his face. Hans' head dropped to the floor in defeat. 